So we've got our first question here. Um, it's an ICD-9 question about um, shaken baby syndrome. So CP asks, hi Loreen, I have here a question. I get so confused with the choices. Please tell me how to approach the choices so I get the correct answer. So um, this is obviously must be from a practice test that she was taking. A nine month old baby boy is diagnosed with shaken infant syndrome with subdural hematoma and retinal hemorrhages. The daycare worker told the emergency department physician that she shook the baby to make him stop crying. Uh, not a daycare I want to take my kids to. Uh, <laughs> select the appropriate diagnosis codes for this patient. So this is typically what you would see on a board exam. Um, multiple answers in um, each, I should say multiple codes in each answer, which can at first be like, ugh, so overwhelming. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you how I attack it. Huh, where's my stuff? Hang on. <laughs> Oh, phew. I'm like, no, I work so hard on this slide. <laughs> okay. Color coded and everything. Panic is subsiding. Okay. Scary. So this is, this is my new, this is truly hot off the press. My new recommendations for how to attack the board exam. I have discovered just from feedback from students taking the 2012 version that, um, that, and, th and they've always had it, multiple codes in the answers, but it seems like there are a majority of them are this way versus just a few. Um, I recently took the CPCI exam, that's the instructor exam put out by the AAPC and passed, thank you. And um, it was the whole thing was like this. There was no easy questions. That one's supposed to be harder, but I was like, whoo, I was tired after that. So my new recommendation is to bring in highlighters because you can write in your exam booklet all you want. So bring in like multiple colored highlighters, take the caps off. Don't worry about recapping them because, you know, speed is the issue and look for patterns. So what I did, let's just pretend, you know, the codes that I can use on this in red, I, I noticed 995.55 is an answer A, B and C. And then I quickly looked it up and said, okay, that's the shaken infant syndrome. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need that. And I noticed that it said below it, use additional codes to identify any associated injury. So that, makes sense. So then I looked up, I noticed that 362.81 was also in three answers, B, C, and D. And this is something that I noticed um, and m the way my mind works and being visual that I was picking up on these patterns and I could almost without reading the scenario, figure out what the correct answer is by seeing if there's three of one code and three of another and only like one here or there of other ones, that it's probably like 80% of the time gonna be the one where there's three um, showing up like in three different answers, okay? So the 362.81 I looked up, that's retinal hemorrhage and we did see that up here in blue. And that goes along with use additional codes to identify any associated injuries. So then we had these E codes and I looked up all the different ones. And if you notice um, the pattern, you'll see the only E code that we had three of was the E967.8. And sure enough, that's the one we want. Child um, and adult battering and other maltreatment by non-related caregiver. So it's from the daycare. It's not gonna be by another child. It's not by another relative, but it is was, was by a caregiver. Okay, it wasn't a human bite and it wasn't assault by other means. Our best choice is 0.8. So um, we could have probably figured out the answer with either the two um, main ICD codes or by one of them and an E code. But um, so the answer is, if you guys want to type in the, the um, questions box, what do you think the answer is? A, B, C, or D? We should do a poll next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. Idea. So the answer is C, because we've we have the shaken baby um, infant syndrome which we need, and we needed the three six two point eight one. Um, now answer A and B both had that in it, right? But the only one that had the correct E code was C. All right. So that's how you really should attack it. Um, I did read the question first for purposes of the webinar, but what I recommend on the board exam is you look up the, the, the answers first, and my revised recommendation is, is look up a few of them first, because you can't look up every single one um, like this. But once I figured out that 995.55 was definitely needed, I knew D wasn't correct, so I could, I could cross that one off. 
And then once I looked up 362.81, I realized, yeah, I need that as the additional code. So I knew that A wasn't right. So now I had narrowed it down to B and C. And then I, then I used the E codes, and then I figured out, you know, that C had to be right. Okay, so hopefully that will help with that one. You got some smart coders out there. Yeah. yeah. I just thought everybody said right. C. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.